What's happening? Getting close. Pizza's as good as ever? I'll let you know. That's pizza bread. Did you know that's pizza bread? Yeah, some Arabs must have bought the place. Okay, Mr. Velodrome, when do you get your stuff? What stuff? Just look at those arms, huh? It's like I got inoculated for swine flu. You got inoculated 30 times for swine flu. Well, it was free, man. Oh, you're a real pixie, aren't you? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna let you get hungry, and I'm gonna sweat you, and I'm gonna see hey, how Sean, smart... Sean, Sean, take care of the rest of this, would you? Absolutely. Hi, Rivera. Jack, how you been? Dominic, am I glad to see you. I told you, I knew him before he was born. Wait a minute, wait, what's going on here? A little bursitis in my right arm, otherwise, uh, okay. Your uh, father tells me you're not married yet. Yeah, that's what he keeps telling me. Hey, come on, let's get out of the traffic. Come over here. What is this? What's going on? Come on, tell me. Oh, no misunderstanding. You know, I know what your problem is. You probably can't find a woman that is as good a fighter as your mother was, huh? Yeah, Rivera, open him up, yeah? yeah. He's our guest. Compliments in Barton's department store. Well, I told him it was a mistake. What did he do? Caught him outside the store with this. All well, right. I uh, was going to buy it, and I uh, changed my mind, and I forgot where it was. In your pocket? Well, you get older, you forget, you know. 
Well, what is this? They're going to press charges for a lousy $10 plant hanger? $7.98. Hey, come on. They got the right. Stores get especially uptight around Christmas. That's all right. I'll handle it. Okay, but I got to warn you. That security officer at Barton's thinks he's Kojak. You know what you're looking at, Sergeant Del Vecchio? Latest statistics on shoplifting in this country. $1.6 billion lost every year. You know who has to pay for it? All of us. And that includes you. Yeah, I'm shocked and appalled. It's not amusing. Neither is putting a 70-year-old man through the humiliation of a police booking. He'll get a suspended sentence, so what does it prove? It might teach him a lesson he'll never forget. I want to tell you something about this man. What's the point? This is the point. Jack Henderson has spent his lifetime as a carpenter, craftsman. He raised the family, paid his taxes, did everything he was supposed to. Now, I don't know whether he stole that plant hanger or not, but even if he did, I think he's entitled to a break. I'm touched. But company policy is... I'll take your company policy and shove it in your book. I want to show you just how tough this world can be if everyone had to follow the rules precisely. You got a restaurant on the fifth floor of this place, right? Yeah, the clips are more. Come with me. I want to show you something. I'm a very busy man, Sergeant. Hey, Sergeant. You know, there's a state law that specifies that you have to serve exactly what's stated in the menu. Now, if I go up there and I find one piece of canned fruit in the fresh fruit cocktail or canned turkey in the chicken salad, I'm going to hold the cook, the restaurant manager, and the manager of the store in, and I'm going to make sure they know exactly why. Real bulldog, aren't you? Okay. You just keep that old man out of Barton's. Permanently. Thank you, Mr. Langtree. I knew you were a man of compassion. Tell your father about this. No, of course not. You see a lot of him, don't you? Well, every couple of days or so. How's Phil doing? Uh, got a card from him the other day. He's in Hawaii with the kids. Be thinking about you on Christmas. Huh. Should have gone with them. Yeah, well, he's such a big shot now with all these businesses. I didn't want to intrude. There it is. Home sweet home. Visiting hours, two to four on Sunday. Don't put any files in the cake. You take care of yourself, Jack. I'll drop by soon. You mean that? I do. to appreciate is that after a number of years of marriage, a touch of glamour becomes very important. Need a dime for the phone. Sure. Hiya, Pop. Hey, sure. I like putting a touch of parsley on a pork chop. Why don't you put a piece of parsley on her? I'm gonna call in. Voila. Oh, Shans, that would make a hookup blush. What do you think, Mr. Delvecchio? They call this style peekaboo. Do you think a woman like my Lorraine might become interested, say, in the, uh... What's the matter? Well, Father, would you like some aftershave cologne? I think uh, Ixnay on the cologne. Uh, very glamorous. What do you say that style was? Peekaboo. Rivera, any messages? Yeah, your friend, the security officer at Barton's department store, just called and punctured my eardrums. Yeah, well, he uh, gets emotional over the growing crime rate in America. This time he might not be totally off base. They just nailed your forgetful old man again. You want me to cover it? No, wait. Uh, I'll handle it. Uh huh. That's what you said this morning. I know. Let's go, Shans. We got business. What? Long story. I'll tell you on the way. Goodbye, Pop. Ciao, Damon. I hate to say I told you so. Yeah, well, you just did, so let's skip the pleasantries and get down to the basics, all right? Approximately one hour ago, I followed this man. One Jack Henderson, out of our Green Street exit. He had this baseball mitt, baseball, pair of earrings, for which he could provide no proof of... Jack, 
Do you have an explanation? I'll take the fifth. Can't take the fifth. Did you take that mustache off? For which he could provide no proof of purchase. And that's just for openers. I have here in my hands a list. Jack, why did you come back to this place? And don't give me the fifth or any other numbers. What's well, the only store that sells Tony Perez's first basement match? Oh. Uh, can I talk, please? Only if you keep your voice down. I have in my hands a list found on the shoplifter. The alleged shoplifter. It contains 60 items, some 49 of which have been checked off. You realize what that means? Yeah, 11 haven't been checked off. It means that this man has been systematically stealing. I feel I have sufficient grounds for a warrant to search his home. Now look, this might be a big score to you, but he's not Dillinger, you know. On this list is a macrame plant hanger, a baseball mitt, a pair of earrings. You want to explain that? Dominique, don't, don't let him come to the home. They're all my friends. They wouldn't understand. Well, then give me something. Anything. Field binoculars. Binoculars, got it. A uh, small pocket uh, camera. Pocket camera's got it. A lady's wig. Miniature wig. roulette game. I have a bridge oh, set with two things of cards in it. Right, bridge set, got it. And uh, uh, Oija. It's a Ouija board. board. A calculator. Calculator. A starter stamp collection. Collection, stamp collection. Uh, portable radio. Swiss Army knife. Right. Uh, gold pen and pencil set. Got it. A denture cleaner, and that's it from here. Right. And a electric alarm clock, that's all. Well, there's still two items missing, a uh, box of cigars and a mouth organ. I forget where they are. Is my friend going to be charged with shoplifting? No, uh, when it reaches these proportions, it becomes grand theft. There is a big difference between the accidental theft of a plant hanger and all this. Now, do you see that difference, Jack? Yeah, yeah, I can. Good. Now, I'm entitled to an explanation, I think. No comment. Now, look, I went out on a limb for you. A lot of good it did me. Uh, that is appreciation. Oh, okay, Dale, now you're getting too personal. I will ask the questions from now on. Be my guest. Hey, what the hell are you doing with this Dacron stuffed canary bird, anyway? You wind it up, sounds almost like a real one. Mary Lindsay's been very depressed since hers flew out the window. And his baseball glove. What about that? Art Sack likes to keep busy while he's watching TV. He asked his son for a new glove. You know what he got? Pajamas. He's got pajamas coming out of his earlobes. So what if he only made it to class deep ball? That's further than most people get. So if he wants to imagine he's Pete Rose, who's he hurting? Hey, binoculars. So you decided to play Santa Claus, is that it? Yes. I decided I'd do something about it. You know what that place is like, apart from your family and your friends? Especially this time of year. For all the memories. Look, uh, Jack, don't they have a party or something? Oh, sure, sure. Management buys them a turkey, puts up a Christmas tree. But that's not enough. Last year, three people died between Christmas and New Year's because they thought nobody gave a damn. Well, I give a damn. I promised them this year would be different. But I ran out of money. And for the first time in my life, I decided to become a thief. Jim Remsen? Right. You don't recognize me? Right. Dominic Del Vecchio? Right. Look, I don't want to be rude, but I got to get on the air in a few minutes, and, well, you know you're not supposed to be back here without a studio pass. Yeah, well, uh, this is better than a studio pass. It gets me in anyway, you know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> you said I know you. Yeah! Back in Harding High. You were president of the Avengers. I was vice president of the Irish Dukes. You're token Italian, remember? Del Vecchio? Irish Dukes, Correct. we used to kill each other. Right, you got it. Mm. Hey, listen, I, I just thought it might be fun looking up an old enemy. <laughs> you know, I'm really impressed about this, uh, this uh, human interest story job you've been doing here. Gee, thanks. One minute there. Oh, I, got a, I got a real beauty for you, too. 
Listen, can you give it to me in a one-liner? A one-liner? Okay, look. Uh, a dignified old man uh, versus a cruel, giant, impersonal corporation. Uh, so, what happened? Well, he was picked up in Barton's department store for shoplifting, for gifts for the other old people in the home. Now, isn't that a grabber? That's no good. That doesn't have enough top spin on it. What do you mean, top spin? What? Top spin juice. I mean, the guy's just a shoplifter. Now, if you can bring me a man who was, what, stealing to support his family, I'd be over in a minute. 30 seconds to air. I'll see you around, Del Vecano. Hey, wait a minute. He's no shoplifter. Hey, Ribson, you got her up. Well? Somebody? Uh, I, I want to see Sergeant Del Vecchio. He's busy right now. Oh, I'll wait. Uh, where do they keep the prisoners? From there. Thank you. Summer. Pop, ah, what are you doing here? I thought I'd find out why my son arrested one of my best friends. Oh, now, look, oh Lieutenant Mackerman, you know my father. Oh, how are you, sir? Did you make a deal? Yeah. I got his dealer, two pushes, and a first-round draft choice. Uh, that lousy push has been in out too many times to let him go without something good, so don't screw it up. Appreciate your confidence. Nice seeing you again. That's about the dope push you were telling me about. Uh-huh. You gonna let him go free? Pop, that's police business. You want to see Jack? Right over there. Ah, I think he'd be too ashamed to see me right now. How can you make jokes about letting a dope peddler go free while you lock up an old man who never harmed a fly? Well, Pop, I can't make a deal with Jack. You mean because Jack isn't a bigger criminal, he's had to stay in jail? One thing has nothing to do with the other. You should see him in there with drunks. I pimps, saw him, all right, I saw him. Well, well, why don't you get him out? I can't do that. Now, look, there are certain realities ah, about... Talk to me about realities. Talk to me about right and wrong. Talk to me about a man who built my barbershop 43 years ago with his own hands and didn't take a nickel until the business was paying for itself. Excuse me a minute, Bob. He wouldn't even take a haircut on the house. Were you looking for me? About tomorrow night. Dominic, you still haven't answered your father's question. Which one? If you're busy, I can catch you later. No, now it's fine. Dr. Petrie, this is my father. Anana. Dr. Petrie's a staff psychiatrist. Dominic's told me so much about you. Personally or professionally. See you in a minute. Nice meeting you. Here, Piacera. My pleasure. How would you feel about duck with orange sauce, au gratin potatoes, and asparagus tips? Not bad. Uh, how about dessert? That's negotiable. Oh. I want tomorrow night to be the most memorable Christmas Eve of your life. Yeah, it is already. I'll bring the champagne. Do that. And my pajamas. That's optional. Oh. Seven o'clock. Nice girl. There she is, isn't she? Is she married? Look, Pop, the only way Jack's gonna get out of here is if we bail him out, and I got $46 in my bank account. I brought money. How much do we need? He's booked on grand theft. The bail is $2,000. I got 52. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. If we raise $200, the bondsman can put up the rest. Hold on a second. Lenny, got a minute? Excuse me. I got a friend needs bailing out. Oh, yeah? How much? $2,000. No sweat. Cost you $200. All right, everybody, listen up for a minute, please. Just listen to me for a minute. Now, I know it's uh, Christmas time and we're all short of cash, but um, we have a special case here of an old personal friend. And I need bail money uh, to help him out so he doesn't have to spend Christmas in jail. Now, a lot of people say that detectives don't have hearts. Well, I don't agree uh, with yeah. that. Watch, shots. Uh, I'd like to contribute a saw buck just to shut you up. My lips are sealed. Talk about heart. This bleeds enough for all of us. Here's my personal mark. Can I just give him hey, uh, Del Vecchio? Yeah. This friend of yours don't have any money. You're gonna have to guarantee the bond. No problem, no problem. You got $1,800? Look, don't lose any sleep, Alfred. Jack's been around for 50 years. 
It's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. I hope so, too. Did you find Jack yet? No, he left the home this morning. And that's all we know. What time did he leave? Around 8 o'clock. Maybe he got caught in the Christmas rush. Well, for two and a half hours? When you have an accident? Bite your tongue. Hey, let's move, huh? Let's move. Why do you get me into things like this? I'm not the one who arrested him. Your man didn't show up, Bubby. Where is he? Well, when he, um, is in an accident. Accident? Yeah. The judge doesn't know anything about an accident. I'll go tell the judge. Yeah. Dominic, aren't you gonna go pick Jack up? Yeah. Oh, that's where we're going. So long, honey. Well, I got all the trophies I can handle. Excuse me. Hello, Lars. $17 on the nose. Here's your radio. Okay. What else we got? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the builder I worked for gave me that. It says, to Jack Henderson for 25 years of loyal service. Thompson Development Company. They should have given me a pension. Yeah, well, uh, engraving takes five dollars off the value. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 90 bucks for the whole McGillan. Worth at least 150. Not to me. 125. Look, everybody comes in here this time of year to sell stuff. Do I get any buyers? No, sir. No buyers. I give you 90 bucks, and you can have your bowling trophy. Scrooge. A hundred. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Emma, 4 and 8, low ball. Hello, Prince. Emma, Hello. 4 and 8, low ball. One car. Likewise. M.R. 4 and 8, low ball. That? M.R. 4 and 8, Call. low ball. Call. I have a straight. Look. Not time is going to turn. I'm close, Sonny. Oh, are you Dominic Del Vecchio? I'm his father. Oh, can you give this to him? Sure. Yeah, it's not supposed to be open until Christmas. Who's it from? I was told not to say. Yeah, this is for you. Oh, thank Merry you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, sir.
look, I'm gonna find the guy, Lenny. I'm out $1,800. You guaranteed he was gonna show. Now, come well, on. Well, the truth is, I don't have that kind of money. Devecchio, I got a few amigos who could use, uh, you know, a few favors. Say that again, Lenny. Hey, come on, Delvecchio. I'm just, come on. I'm just trying to help you out. Come on. Go. I'm just trying to help you out. Delvecchio, I want to talk to you. What's happening with the drug deal? I'm working on it. Well, what's holding up the wheels of progress? I'm working on it. How much longer? I said I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Delvecchio, come in here. All right, what's the matter? Oh, everything. Jack Henderson, Skip Bail. God knows where he is. I'm on the hook for 1800 bucks to Lenny Marshall. We're gonna name for guys like you that's usually found scribbled on a men's room wall. Merry Christmas to you, too. Hey, why don't I buy you a drink and we can talk about it? Yeah, I'd like to, but I better stay on it. Look, uh... I got a 16-year-old. I like to kid myself as smart enough to someday attend an institution of higher learning. Against the day, this unlikely occurrence eventuates. I have salted away a couple of bucks. Well, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, well, if you have a need, I want you to know I'm there for you. I appreciate that, Lieutenant. Okay. Have a Merry Christmas. Yeah. Dominic, you too. Dad on line two. Yeah, Pop, it's me. You have to do something, Dominic. What's the matter, Pop? I don't know why I opened it, but I did. What are you talking about? Jack sent a letter. It was addressed to you. But I just thought I'd take a look at it, and, and, and now I don't know what... All right, look, Pop, calm down. Just read me the letter. Dear Dominic. I'm sorry to have so deeply involved you in this disgraceful thing. However, I have one last favor to request. I'm not sure my son would do as I want, so I'm asking you to take care of it. While I'm not a, worth very much alive, I have a $5,000 insurance policy in the top drawer of my dresser. And I want you to use the proceeds to pay back the value posted for me. And use the remainder to buy my friends at the home the Christmas I promised them. You have the list. I have always been a man of my word, and I don't intend to change now. By the time you read this, I will already be out of everyone's way. The friend Jack. I've written out a description. Get an ATP out of this, will you, Robbie? Right away, Moon Tom Town. Jimmy! Get this out in the teletype, huh? You always call me Clark. Christmas Eve and I want to get out of here suddenly. It's Jimmy. Merry yeah. Christmas. I'm wait, going home. Wait, 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 wait. Look, look, just make a few calls to me. Pop called me a little while ago. Jack Henderson wrote a suicide note. Suicide threats are about as reliable as political promises. I'm going home. Wait, wait, wait. You understand. Jack's not the kind of guy to play those kind of games. Just, just a couple of calls, huh? Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Doc. No. Uh, listen, I'm gonna be a little late. What's the matter? Uh, it's a long story. Uh, can you hang on? I'll turn down the dock and sing along with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. You're terrific. I got a possible here. A description fits, but there's no ID. County hospital? County morgue. Old man jumped off a bridge. Let's go. supposed to be top spin i'm presenting you with a rare opportunity you know you're wasting time as a cop you could make a fortune selling life insurance Look, this is the man i told you about he's a suicide note he wrote i'm gonna give you a chance to go on the air and try to locate him people don't like to hear about suicides on christmas eve what are you worried about your lousy uh, ratings <laughs> they aren't lousy 
And I don't intend for them to get that way by following up every crackpot notion that comes my way. Look, this is a man's life we're talking about. My spot for tonight has already been filmed at the orphanage. Run it next Christmas. I need copy for this sort of thing. Writing copy takes time. Extemporize. Just tell everybody out there to look for this man. It'll have tremendous emotional appeal, believe me. Let me think about it. No, no, don't think about it. Trust me. The last person who said that ran off with my wife. You know, the trouble with the world today is everybody is concerned with himself. Nobody believes in anything anymore. When I was a kid, we thought America was the greatest country in the world. Nobody doubted that God was on our side, let alone that he exists. Now there's nothing. No anchors, no family, nothing. Just trips to Hawaii, quadraphonic. My grandfather used to live with us. Now my kid doesn't want me for dinner one night a week. Too much trouble. We've stopped caring about each other as human beings. You're right. I originally had a story planned on the Christmas celebration at the Reseda Orphanage. But with the permission of our producer, I'm going to honor the request of Sergeant Del Beckano of the Washington Heights Precinct and ask everyone out there for your cooperation in trying to locate this man, Jack Henderson. No, he's not an escaped criminal or a wanted felon. He is a man who at this very moment may be attempting to take his own life in order oh, you that want the money leg. can be used to buy gifts yeah. for his friends. Yeah, sure. So if you have seen this man, please get no Sergeant Del Beckano of the police yeah. department immediately. I'd like to read just a portion of a letter he wrote. While I'm not worth very much alive, I have a $5,000 insurance policy in the top drawer of my dresser. And I want the proceeds to go to buy my friends at the home the Christmas I promised them. We've got sleep well, sweet dreams, and dozing. Which one's the strongest? You want to know the truth? None of them are that strong. You're probably concerned because of all the things you've heard about prescription sleeping pills. But none of these are that strong. Let me see. Which one would you like? This was supposed to be the first Christmas in three years at home with my family. Take the car and go home. No, I'll wait another hour. There's no sense both of us sitting here looking at a telephone. We got units out there looking for them. This whole thing isn't your fault, you know. No, it's not your fault either. Would you go home? No, and don't tell me what to do. I'm just as crazy as you are. I don't have to be here either. I got some place to be. Well, then go and be there. No, I can't go. A possible a Jack Henderson. A motel on Jefferson and 18th Street. Oh, no, don't tell oh, me. Our unit's checking it out right now. Got the phone number? Yeah, it's 555-4639. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Henderson? Jackson. Sorry. Merry Christmas, Mr. Jackson. Henderson? Jackson. Is he dead? Jackson? It would appear not. Outside. Can I come in? Of course. Boy, am I glad to see you. <laughs> oh, we were all so worried about you. You could come through the door. There's no need to go skulking around like a criminal. I am a criminal. That's right, I forgot. How did things go in the court? You haven't heard anything? No. I'm a fugitive from a chain gang. What's been going on here? Well, the usual joyous festivities. When we sang Christmas carols, Wanda got started crying, so they carried her out. Believe it or not, I miss being here. 
shows even pain can get to be a habit. We missed you, too. Rest your bones here. They're expecting me back. I'll go and just make up an excuse, and we'll talk. Make yourself comfortable. I'll be right back. What do you mean I'm a murderer? The duck is dead, and the orange sauce is purple. Now, look, you're too sophisticated and intelligent a lady to be using guilt. Flattery will get you cold asparagus tips. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Having a relationship with you can be very enlightening. I never realized I was a masochist. Well, you're a psychiatrist. Shall you ought to be able to figure out a cure for what? that one. Jill. Talk to you later. Jack just showed up at the Golden Days Retirement Home. Oh, boy, that's great. I figure he just was looking for some attention. Let's go. Hey, Leo, just stay with him till we get there, okay? I brought you some of Mrs. Anderson's Christmas cookies. Not hungry. Leo, take care of yourself. You can't go yet. You don't have any money, do you? Don't need any. Jack! Leo, if you're having a heart attack, you grabbed the wrong side. But I appreciate it anyway. Jack! You down. I'm so sorry. Forget I didn't about realize that. what I understand would happen. That. Where is he? Just tell me where he is. He's gone. What do you mean, gone? Where is he? I did everything I could to stop him. He stole my bottle of pentobarbital. Oh, my God. Hey, how many pills were left in that bottle? How many pills were left in that bottle? I just had it refilled. He, he took the whole bottle. could have just cleared your throat. My name is Jack Henderson. I want the best room in the house. My son Paul said you'd handle things. Oh, yes, Mr. Henderson. Uh, we have a beautiful room available. Uh, follow me. This time of year is so always so quiet. You know, I've been in California almost four years, but it still doesn't seem like Christmas without snow. It never snowed in Bethlehem. <laughs> yes, well, it did in Nebraska. Oh, you want it in Menza. Okay, honey, Merry Christmas. Yeah, just tell the kids that Santa Claus is gonna... Look, I'm sorry, I really am. I'll be home when I get there. Good night, sweetheart. You have any idea what time it is? What'd you say, Sean? Nothing. What I can't figure out is, he says he has no money. So where is he going to kill himself? You think his son has any other ideas? Oh, Mr. Big Shot? Yeah. According to Jack, all he cares about is buying up fancy restaurants and hotels he never even visited here. He could take those pills anywhere. The beach, the park, anywhere. Yeah. Oh, Jack hates the cold. You could believe me. He's an inside person. Okay, does he have any friends he might be staying with? His father. Your father? No. Anybody else? No. One of our favorite conversations is about how everybody died or moved to Arizona. Wait a minute, you just said his son owns hotels, right? Which hotels? Which ones? I don't know.
Who are you calling? Investigative headquarters. You think he might be staying at one of his son's hotels? You have any other ideas? No. Neither do I. Here we are, Mr. Henderson. I hope you find this a very comfortable room. I'm sure I will. Lovely view. You can see the Christmas tree at Claremont Motors. Uh, is there anything else, Mr. Henderson? Yes. Do you have a water glass in your bathroom? Two. Both wrapped and sanitized. Oh, no, 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 no. no Mr. Henderson, really, I... No, please, we... I want you to have it. Thank you, sir. Christmas Eve comes only once a year. I guess you've forgotten that. Yeah, I guess I did. We'll remember next year. Henderson. Henderson. spiral 15 yards? Yeah, so what? Well, it's only five yards. There ain't no spiral. Officers. We're looking for an older man in a gray coat. Uh, has gray hair. Name is Jack Henderson. Uh, Mr. Henderson, yes, of course. Where is him here? Uh, follow me. Okay, Jack, keep walking. Cavalry's coming. Cavalry's coming. Cavalry. That's it, Jack. Cavalry rise. The cavalry rise. Rita Hayward riding the cavalry. Where am I? Where am I? You're at a Christmas Eve party, Jack. Merry Christmas, Dell. Merry Christmas, Sean. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The staff and management of KBCD are proud that our efforts help save Jack Henderson's life. Because after all, that's what life is really all about. And of course, we want to thank Sergeant Del Vecchino for bringing the case to our attention. Our news alert team contacted Barton's department store. And when we explained the situation, well, they proved that the spirit of Christmas is still very much alive. 
The news alert team was there when Barton's department store delivered Jack Henderson the Christmas he had promised his friends. Did you ever get by Petrie's place? Oh, yeah. And she was very understanding. Yeah, Lorraine used to be very understanding before we got married. How did you like that sexy outfit? Oh, great. The problem was with me. I was so emotionally drained by the time I got home, she's now convinced of having an affair with another woman. Well, I guess that's what life is really all about. You're right, Sergeant Delvacano. A prominent lawyer bridges the personal and professional crossroads in his life on Hanlon. And later today, a sucker punch becomes a deadly blow for a boxing champ on Ellery Queen. <laughs>